this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a Philips Evnia monitor, a 34-inch ultra-wide with QD OLED display, and some serious specs that make it absolutely stunning to play games on. It's also interesting for a number of other reasons that include quirky modes like P-by-P, so picture-by-picture picture from two different computers, as you can see here. This weird smart view, which is basically a zoomed-in magnified version of the center of your crosshair, so you can shoot enemies from a distance even when they're quite far away and you can see them up close, a bit strange. And then some ambiglow technology, which is RGB lighting that follows what's going on on the screen to give you that color beamed onto the wall for a more immersive view. So in this video, I'm gonna show off all those things and more and talk about what this monitor is like to use. My main takeaway from this is that it's gonna be absolutely stunning to use. It's absolutely gorgeous in a number of different games. It's a 1440p monitor, so it's 3540 by 1440 with a maximum of 175 hertz refresh rate. And it has a number of other really nice highlights to it that include HDR True Black 400 certification and a million to one contrast ratio. But more importantly, as you can see, it looks absolutely amazing in a number of different games. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do that justice on camera, depending on what you're looking at. But what I found is I've tested a few different monitors, and this might be one of the most striking that I've seen. The color representation is absolutely magnificent. It has a really good color gamut, so it's got a nice wide range to it, but also obviously you've got really dark blacks and really bright light colors. You're seeing it in a variety of different scenes here, so obviously I've got it in daylight shots and at nighttime as well, and you'll see just how striking the colors are and the angles and the views and just the general experience from it. It's absolutely stunning. And I found this in multiple different use cases, in video editing, in working on it, and in playback. It has some interesting quirks because it's QD OLED, which means it has some pixel refresh display technology in it to make sure that it doesn't get burned in and it looks really good over time. And it's basically just managed that way. So I did find that there was some quirks to the system where, for example, the monitor would turn off briefly every few hours, or quite a few hours between each of those sessions. So it's not too much of a problem, minor consideration, but you do need to be aware of that. And that's obviously to ensure the longevity of the monitor and make sure that it keeps going. But I had no problems whatsoever with it beyond that. We used it for gaming for multiple hours in multiple different ways. Obviously, you're seeing some shots of Fortnite in it, which is a bit lowbrow considering what the monitor is. But there's also a variety of other games here. So you've seen Need for Speed, for example, Ghost Runner, where you played uh, Ready or Not on there, Red Dead Redemption 2, which obviously looks magnificent. Now you can see the Ambiglow technology gives this really nice effect from the rear. So it has these RGB areas on the rear of the monitor, and you can adjust through various different settings at the hardware level. So there's a control on the right-hand side. It's basically a joystick which not only turns it on, but adjusts between various different settings. And I'll show you some of the settings of that in a minute. But what I found is this gives a nice reflection on the wall behind it. And obviously you can use that to then highlight what's going on in the game. Now, this is certainly better than the majority of other RGB effects that I've seen on other monitors. Usually it's sort of slapped on there as an afterthought and it doesn't really give you a very good lighting experience. But you can see there's a lot of lights going on here and they are actually quite bright. Now, I will say it's not as good as the Ambilight technology on Philips televisions. So I've got a TV downstairs in my lounge with Ambilight, which is much better than this Ambiglow. I feel like the Ambiglow isn't quite bright enough, but it is a hell of a lot brighter than those other monitor experiences that I've had elsewhere. And it does add some nice visual effects to it, and you can obviously change it. So you can see that it's a pretty stunning monitor from multiple angles, both the display and at the rear has got a very nice setup. Now there are a lot of different controls in here. You can see that there are a number of different smart image modes. So it's various different experiences that you can switch between that adjust what's on the screen. I really like the low blue mode for working purposes, and I'll show you what difference that makes in a minute. And then you've got easy read and economy. So those obviously drop the brightness right down, eliminate some of that blue light, make it a little bit easier on your eyes. But then when you get into like the various different console, FPS, RTS modes, all those different things, they really brighten things up and obviously bring in those colors. Now it's a 10 bit display as well. So it'll give you 10 bit color representation as well as that HDR. 
So my experiences there has just been absolutely magnificent for colors and just the differences there. But here you can see me switching into that low blue mode. So this eliminates that blue light, makes it a little bit easier to use when you're working during the day. So you can flip this mode on and then you can see it just dims things down a little bit. Not just eliminating brightness, but eliminating some of that blue light. So it makes it less harsh and makes it much easier to work on. And then you can just keep working and then eventually just switch back into gaming mode. Now, as I said, you've got some interesting gaming quirks in here. So you can see that you've got adaptive sync. You'll notice also that you have that smart crosshair. So the smart crosshair is basically a digital crosshair that it puts in the middle of the screen. That's nothing new. That's pretty standard on a lot of different monitors. I've seen that. But then you also have a dark boost, which basically brightens up the screen even more for those dark areas. So if you go into a dark area of a game, that can do that. But then you've also got that sharpshooter. And a sharpshooter is what I showed already. It's basically a magnified section of the screen. So if you combine this with the crosshair, you've got a zoomed in area right slap bang in the middle of the screen, which is where you're going to be aiming. It's a bit difficult to get used to, I'll be honest. I think I don't personally like it. I can see it's pretty interesting, though. So you basically have that zoomed in area to give you the upper hand over other people that wouldn't have that. It's kind of weird, quite fun and an interesting design quirk of the monitor. Now, once again, I'm showing off from some other angles and in different lighting positions. So you can see here, I've got the ambiglow on and you will notice that it does have some of that effect going through to the back of my wall and onto those posters behind it. Now, I feel like if you have a blank wall, a blank canvas, they'll probably experience that a bit better. You saw it in the other room where there was nothing on the wall and the effect was a bit nicer. You can see that there are various different settings in here though, so you can adjust the brightness of it. It was set to brightest, but it also has both follow video and follow audio mode, so it'll go between those, and then various different other sort of effects. Now, I personally would stick to follow video or follow audio because those are the better visual effects that you have on there. And I do really like those. I think that they add a nice experience to it. Now, the other thing is you've got two HDMIs and one DisplayPort connection on it and then USB-C. So that's an interesting quirk. One thing of note is that in order to get the 175 hertz refresh rate, you do need to use DisplayPort. So you can see it here as the input source because what I noticed was if I used HDMI instead, I was only getting a maximum of 100 hertz refresh rate. So that's something to bear in mind. Make sure you use DisplayPort if you want the best out of it. Now, I'll leave all the specs in the description so you can find out more about what it does on paper. But obviously, I've shown you quite a few different things and what's going on in the reality of the experience here. And it is very nice looking in a number of different ways. I was really impressed by it, frankly. And moving from my usual Samsung 49-inch ultra-wide monitor to this was obviously a reduction in size. But what I found is not only does it look good in games, it also still gives you plenty of space to do side-by-side -side snapping of windows. But the other quirk of it is that you can put two computers on this. So you can attach two PCs. So I've got here one on the left, one on the right, obviously. I put it in picture-by-picture -picture mode, which is side-by-side -side with these two different views. And it gives you a pixel resolution of 1720 by 1440, which is a bit of a weird one because obviously that's not even 1080p, but it is big enough that you can do a number of things on it. So here you can see I'm playing YouTube on one PC, for example, and then just browsing through Steam on the other. And you've got a nice split between those, but you can see just how many windows and tabs you can sort of get alongside each other. So on the right hand side, you can see I'm now watching two of my own videos. So if you want to multi prawn, you can. And it is possible to do that. But even in standard mode, if you're not using it with the picture by picture mode, you do get a lot of space to snap windows. You can see how big this is. Obviously at 34 inch 1440p, if you've not used one of those displays before, it's a nice ultra wide gaming experience. It's really immersive, but it also gives you the option to multitask. Now it also has picture in picture mode, which gives you a tiny little window of what's on the other computer. So you can have basically control over one PC, but in a tiny little window in the top right. I don't really know the point of this. It's very odd. You could play a YouTube video up here, for example, or maybe multitask. Maybe you just want to keep an eye on a server or something. I don't really know, but it sort of overlays over the top of what's on the main PC or on the main bit of the display. So you can see that is now blocking what's on there. So you have to bear that in mind. So the picture in picture mode is a bit of a quirk. I'm not sure I'd use that very much. Going back into standard mode though, here you can see me just editing video on just one of those PCs. And you'll notice that there's plenty of space here, plenty of room to negotiate around. 
and have loads going on on the screen. You've got a nice big view of what's happening. Now, with an ultra-wide display, you obviously have less vertical height, and that's usually the comment I get when people watch these sorts of videos, is, oh, you don't have as much, why not just get a big TV or something? Well, with an ultra-wide, you get a much more sort of side-to-side -side view, and the experience is very immersive when you're playing games because you're basically soaked into that view, and you, you have a nice peripheral vision where basically you don't need to move your eyes as much. You're looking at the center of the screen, but you get to see a lot more of what's going on on the sides of the game. So you just feel a lot more immersed into it. And it's an experience that you need to experience in order to enjoy. So if you've never tried 21 by 9 1440p, you really have to. And this is just ticks the boxes in so many different ways, this display, because obviously QD OLED means you've got one of the best screen technologies available at the moment. And it also is just gorgeous in multiple ways. And it's got some pretty high-end specs. So 175 hertz refresh rate on a 1440p is pretty decent. And you've got a nice fast refresh, HDR, 10-bit color, great representation. And more importantly, it just looks absolutely stunning. And the takeaway there is that is the main thing. If you're using this mostly for gaming, you're going to thoroughly enjoy it. It works perfectly well and is really good for video editing and for working on as well because of the color representation. But for gaming purposes, it's absolutely gorgeous. And going back to my standard monitor is going to be pretty tough because it's definitely not the same sort of level. So if I did a 49-inch version of this that I could test out, <laughs> that would probably be a much more engaging experience and a thorough joy. Now, in terms of the sort of areas that let it down, you can see that I'm using a speaker here in this view uh, because mostly the speakers on this are not amazing. Now, they are good enough. I was watching Netflix on here with this monitor speaker, um, so it does deliver enough sound for that. But if you play games on it, you'll find it's quite tinny. It doesn't give that good a representation. It's meant to have DTS sound, but you know it's not incredible. Um, that's usually the case with speaker monitors, I find, so it's not that surprising. However, it's good enough for the most part to, play, to do a number of different things. So it's not terrible, it's not awful, it's not so bad that I wouldn't recommend the monitor based on it. And most people will probably choose to upgrade anyway. Now, one of the other things that's interesting, another quirk of it with the P-by-P mode, so if you are thinking about doing two PCs side-by-side, side, is there is actually a KVM switch built into this. So I haven't shown the ports on there, but you do have a USB connection to your PC. So there's USB pass-through, so you can basically plug in USB connection from the monitor to your PC, but then you have KVM switch, which means that you can use one keyboard and mouse to control the two different computers. So if you do want to do that sort of P-by-P mode, you can... It's just, I think it's worth bearing in mind, but it's 1720 by 1440, so it's not your standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so it's a bit quirky, but you do have the capabilities to be able to do that. But for standard gaming, as you've seen from all these different shots, it gives you a really wide experience, and it's absolutely magnificent. So that is my view of this monitor, which I would totally buy if I didn't already have a bigger one. But at 34 inches, 1440p, HDR, 10-bit color, it's just so many different things that make it brilliant, and it is highly recommended in my mind. This has been the Provoke Pro, and I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the description to find out more about the specs and where to buy and other things. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.